マッケンジー中出撃だ了解どうした追ってこないのかよしいい子だ。The RE MS 06 FZ Zaku 2 Kai. Some call him the Tragic Prince, Bernie. One of the only grunt suits you can think of in the entire Gundam UC lore that actually defeated a Gundam. And he wasn't even a new type or a cyber new type. In terms of grunts, Benny is truly one of the best of the best. And his tragic demise is akin to that of Japanese taste in love stories. Japan, typically, Throughout history, has preferred tragic tales of a love that can never be, that usually ends in death or loss, which pretty much sums up 0080. This is one of my personal favorite Zaku types. I have a whole ton of Xeon suits I like, but this one held a special place in my heart. Though some may feel the proportions are off, I actually prefer this to the Alex 2.0 Master Grade, as I feel this is closer to the anime. You may find the head slightly oddly shapen, but if you put it in the classic pose where Bernie is avoiding the machine gun fire of the dog of the Alex Gundam, you'll find that the proportions are on point. This comes with a limited amount of weapons. You get one machine gun with a grenade launcher, an extra mag, and one heat hawk. The machine gun, it's limited because this is an RE100. It stands for Reborn 100. It's basically a big high grade. Back in the day, high grades were technically 1100 scales, but now high grades are relegated to 144 scale. The RE100 is essentially Bandai's way of kind of giving the fans what they want. They basically put all the kits people want at 1100 scale in the RE line, but Bandai fears won't sell that well. So there's less development, less plastic, less stuff goes into it. It's a safer bet financially for Bandai. This kit, if I'm correct, is the first RE100 that does not use any polycaps. And thank God for it. It's sturdily put together. It's actually quite nice, and this may be the RE100 that has changed my mind to the entire line. I don't hate this kit. The beauty of the RE100 is the fact that it's so simplistic and not bad to look at. That, with a little love and attention, you can make an RE100 look as good as a Master Grade. Because for all extensive purposes, most people don't do any armor reveals to show the inner frame of the master grades. So this can stand tall right next to Alex and no one would bat an eye, including me. And I'm glad to see this kit get some form of love in the 1100 scale. Though it's not a master grade, it holds a special place in my heart, as I felt 0080 was the Gundam series that woke me up to the UC, considering Toonami stuck to, like, you know, G Gundam and Gundam Wing, and I was getting a little too old for that. I'm sorry. I was young. My angst was just beginning to fade. I was off of Papa Roach and onto Cream Music. As I say in the Heat Hawk, this thing is the absolute best. I love this Heat Hawk. It's better than the Master Grade one for the Zaku 2 version 2.0, in my opinion. You know what? I don't care. It's just better. The overall design, the execution, The freedom to switch out the Heat Hawk itself? Since it comes with two, this gives you the freedom to actually take one and paint it to be an activated Heat Hawk while the other one could be a metallic color. Please forgive the metallic coloring here. My black base reacted negatively to the plastic, which it wasn't supposed to do. And since I was on a times table, I didn't strip it down and go at it again to perfect it. Also, due to the multiple layers of the black base, it sort of made the inside a little thick, so it couldn't connect to the Heat Hawk correctly. Please forgive me. Under normal circumstances, if I was doing this for my, well, this is for my personal collection, but if I had all the time in the world to dig around, I would have taken this apart, stripped it down, and did it again correctly. The Heat Hawk comes in two varieties the fully extended, ready for war version, and the minimized version that sits on the back of the Zaku's. Butt skirt. Hell, if I know what the hell to call it. This is sweet. I really like this mechanism. It's so well executed. So much better than the Zaku 
maybe Bandai, maybe, I don't know, Zaku 3.0. It could be a cool thing. Maybe a better inner frame and some more Zaku variants besides high mobility type and every other Zaku MS-06 version. You could just crap out, please. Something different. For the love of God, back on point. The backpack is straightforward. Mm, two parts. I probably should have painted one section a sort of off gray to give an illusion of goddamn dog. Should have painted one end an off end gray so it could have given a bit more color contrast. The shoulders, if you haven't noticed, and the chest armor can sort of cave in on itself, giving this more flexibility, which is cool. Looks odd from the back, but if you're looking at the front, it really doesn't matter. I gotta say, this is a great kit, surprisingly. I thought I would despise the RE line, but this has really changed my mind. The fact that it's 1 100 scale also gives it the ability to have better part separation. But I will say this, the plastic used for this kit, I don't like it much. It's very easy to break. So easy to break. And the tubing for the Zaku in and of itself, uh, yeah, also weak sauce. Be careful with it. Though it's rubber and it's fairly flexible, from what I'm told by someone on Discord, and I got the message by the way, my dude, these things can break very easily if you're not careful. Which, uh doesn't surprise me because I broke some plastic parts in this, sadly. There isn't much in terms of detailing. The suit also comes with uh, two extra heads, uh, a commander type helmet for the Zaku and the dome type helmet. This one you might remember better for Gundam Unicorn. I think this is a nice touch. Bandai probably realized that there most likely be people who want a Gundam Unicorn variant, so they just gave the dome helmet as an added bonus. Don't hate it at all. I like it. It's cool to have. Oh, the commander type head, by the way, be careful with this if you paint the kit. Because when you paint these kits, fitment becomes incredibly tight. And removing the dome plate for the commander type, it's so easy to break the fin it isn't funny. I would suggest taking the fin out first, then removing the dome. I wish I thought of this before I did so, because I broke it. It's a real pain in the ass. It does include a mechanism where you can move the inner eye. You gotta literally take the head off or the dome off to do it. Not exactly implemented like the Zaku 2.0 where you can move your head. Where you move the head and the eye moves on its own volition. By the way, this kit does not come with a Bernie figure. You have to buy the Alex 2.0 to get the Bernie figure. Just so you know. You know, don't go run out there buying it and then start screaming at me in the comment section, where's Bernie? I took the liberty of painting the bottom feet thrusters as well. Uh, I didn't bother with painting under the skirt because there is no detail there whatsoever. Overall poseability, fantastic. Comes with an action base adapter. Not bad. Slides out real easy. It doesn't go in the action base. It's like a lot of friction to hold it in place. Which means when you try to pose this thing, uh, the Zaku just pops right off the action base stand. Uh, I guess it could be annoying. If you're fiddling with it a lot. Oh, you yeah, forgot to mention. You don't see too many decals on my Zaku. That's because the decals included are those atrocious stickers. They disgust me. You would need to do a couple layers of clear coat in order to make them blend in reasonably. Ain't nobody got time for that. By the way, the hands. They suck. They... They blow chunks. Major ass they bluff. Um, you only get two hand covers. That's it. You know, the little back plates to go over the hands. That's it, too. It would have been nice if they gave you three. Because it, is, it, it isn't that many hands. So I don't know why they didn't do it. And I was too lazy to make my own casting copies of it. So, whatever. If you lose them, you're boned. A better shot of the thrusters on this kit. It comes with about... Jesus, how many? Like six? No, probably more than that. No, it's about six. That's right. Six on the legs, three on each leg. Nope. Scratch that. Eight on each leg, I believe. And three thrusters on the back plate. I forgot to add the little gold accents I painted with uh, metal detail parts. Oh, well. And lastly, I decided to try and recreate the famous scene between the Zaku and the Alex Gundam. Because I figured if I didn't do some sort of 
little video homage to these two kits together, people would probably complain in the comment sections. Why didn't you add those? You painted them both. Why would you not do it? So, to circumvent that, here they are. Looking pretty cool. <sighs> I lament that I haven't gotten around to building the other dioramas I wanted to due to the lack of space in my apartment for them. You think building a city block would be easy at 1 100 scale, it's not. Skyscrapers are bigger than my dog, dude. On her hind legs. It's more trouble than I thought it would be. Making a factory area would be pretty simple, but you know. I'm just talking too much about things I plan on doing in the future. Pay no mind to it. Well, that's going to do it for me. Overall consensus, this is a great kit. I'd highly recommend it to anyone that is a 0080 War in the Pocket fan, especially if you're a fan of Bernie. It's a good kit. And get water slide decals because the decals that come with it suck. They're completely worthless. Oh, and I also replaced the mono eye. So don't think a metal mono eye comes with this kit, by the way. <laughs>